Listen in as I chat with an 80s pop star turned TV star turned real estate agent about having a red hot go in business. See if this little tune gives you a hint as to who it is. Welcome to the Small Business Big Marketing Show, where successful small business owners share their secrets to take your marketing to the next level. Now, here's your host, Tim Reid. G'day, motivated business owner, Timbo Reid here, and welcome back to another episode of the world's number one small business marketing show, laser focused on helping you grow a business that you love through some very, very smart marketing. So to that end, let's get stuck in to some marketing G-O-L-D. Big show today, team. Shortly, I'll be having a fireside chat with TV star, now turned real estate agent, if you haven't a guest already, David Rain. I'll wet your whistle with a new addition to the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. And I'll give you an update on my 200th live episode. Small Business Big Marketing with Tim Reid. I was recently lucky enough to give a keynote speech at a conference in Los Angeles. Between conference engagements, I did a little retail therapy, as you do. As always, I had my marketing radar on looking for gems that can help you and I grow our businesses. What blew me away was the level of customer service that I saw or experienced. Now, maybe I'm just going to the wrong shops and cafes in my hometown. That's quite likely. But i got to say, the Yanks certainly take customer service to another level. Here's some things that caught my attention. Most stores I went into, I was greeted by one of the staff, and it wasn't just a throwaway greeting. You know, it felt actually quite genuine. Welcome to Ralph Lauren. I'm Steve. Do let me know if you've got any questions. Simple and caring, it was. Now, being 192 centimetres and tipping the scales at 105 kilograms, I often find it difficult. By the way, that 105 is sort of on its way down. It hasn't got a bullet next to it. It's going, it's going south. Uh, I often find it difficult to find the right size. During my time trying shirts on at Tommy Hilfiger's store, you're getting to know the brands I like, aren't you? I could only find one shirt that fitted. One of the staff sensed my frustration and voluntarily went out the back and found five other shirts of the same size that weren't on display. I love a bit of proactivity. You know, Whenever I see it in business, I just love it. If there are employees listening to this podcast, be proactive with your boss. They're going to love you for it. And it's going to put you head and shoulders above the rest of the pack that just aren't being proactive. Anyway, back to some customer service in the States. Upon paying, I often found staff asking the question, how did you find everything? A simple question that gave me the opportunity to offer feedback and the staff to seek ways to improve. Now, beyond customer service, I came across a couple of other gems. The beautifully simple menu at In-N-Out Burgers is brilliant. Yeah, so are the burgers, by the way. You could have a double-double burger, a cheeseburger, or a hamburger. One size fries, a shake, a soda, and that's it. This hugely limited selection made choosing easy and meant that the business could focus on doing a few things really, really well. And the massive lines inside every store, yes, I went to more than one, were proof this simple formula works. I also loved how most burger and Mexican joints offered free salads, sauces, water, and endless soda refills. Now, I know this happens in Australia as well, but not to the same extent. And the quality of the salads that are offered were just fantastic, you know, not just lettuce and tomato. These simple offers have a high perceived value to the customer and come at a relatively low cost to the business. I've talked about this before, but such a great formula when you've got that happening in your business. Finally, I'll finish on a bit of a sour note. As you probably know, tipping is expected throughout the States. Each day, I valet parked my car at the hotel, and without fail, the concierge would open up my my car door, allow me to hop in, hand me the keys, and then wait for the tip. Each time, I handed over a couple of bucks, except one day, 
when my car took 25 minutes to arrive. Hashtag first world problem. When I didn't offer up a tip, the porter muttered, really appreciate that, as he shut the door. Now, I wrote this off as him having a bad day, but it did get me thinking if there were times in my business when I maybe should have kept my game face on and not revealed how I actually felt. Overall, I learned plenty from my time in the States, and it reminded me how important it is to get out of our comfort zone and see how others go about their business. Okay, listen, uh, I want you to take extra special care of this vehicle. Okay. Hey, no problem. Great. Trust me. Alrighty. Now, as always, there's plenty of marketing gold in today's show. But first, let me tell you about how our good friends at Net Registry can help grow your business. You see, Net Registry are there to help you nail all your online marketing needs and some you didn't even know you had, team. Whether it be registering a domain name, website design and hosting, helping you get found on Google, they can even set you up with an email marketing campaign and an effective email marketing campaign at that. You've got to love that. Ensuring you have a decent digital footprint is critical when marketing your business. And this goes way beyond just having a website. So head over to Net Registry today and see how they can get your online marketing sorted. It'll be much cheaper and easier than you think. And tell them Timbo sent you. And by the way, they've got a live workshop coming up in Melbourne on August the 14th. And I'll just tell you exactly what they cover in that. Let me go to the link. Uh, They say um, a three-hour workshop specifically designed for businesses looking to gain insights, learn best practice principles, and review their current online marketing strategy. It's 49 bucks, and I'll put a link in the show notes to this episode, which is 192. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Okay, a little bit of an update on what's going on in the inner circle. The AKA the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. I've just added a section called the Mine, and that's thanks to forum member Danny Thompson, who suggested this. And Danny basically said, "Hey, listen, wouldn't it be great if you could just put up some information about your business, and then each forum member offered up one marketing idea that they'd do if they owned your business." That's exactly what the mine is. We're mining for marketing gold. So the first one went up uh, just a couple of days ago. Kate from Operation Move posted some information about her business. She, you've got to post your website link, a short description of your business's best mates, that one sentence pitch that describes what you do, those three to four personality traits that best describe your business, and then any other relevant images associated with your business. And then it's up to four members to just go and contribute one marketing idea. That's exactly what Kate did. And within 24 hours, there were 10 new marketing ideas posted for Kate in the mind section of the forum. So how good is that? And if nothing else, it actually forces you just by posting the brief about your business to get really clear on who your best mates are and what the personality of your business is and what your one line pitch is. These are really important things that you need to get clear on if you want to build a strong brand. So um, very excited by that new addition to the forum and anyone, any forum member can add their business to the mine and have ideas thrown at them. Now, I just want to address a, an issue that keeps popping up. I have listeners email me and say, very kindly, hey, Timbo, love your show. Been thinking of joining the forum. Haven't got time. Now, I want to just challenge you on that one. The forum doesn't take that much time. The forum is a place for motivated small business owners to go, to hang out, to push each other along, to ask a marketing question of me. I'm in there every day answering them. And also to um, just basically share your marketing thoughts and opinion with other motivated business owners. And that's what it is. If you become a member and posted one question a week that was troubling you in your marketing and answered another question a week that someone else has posted, it'll take you 10 minutes. Yeah, and then you'll say, hey, this is pretty cool, like this place, and you'll go into the training section, which is the classroom and a whole lot of other sections. So the forum doesn't take a lot of time. It costs 49 bucks a month, no commitment required, and I would love to see you in there. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and click on the forum button. 
Very, very quick update on what's happening with the 200th episode of this show that's looming. It is coming up on August the 14th. Uh, it will be a live event. Just am yet. I was hoping to be able to confirm the, lo- the location, the venue by this episode. Uh, it hasn't happened because the person who is responsible for that at the venue hasn't got back to me. Hashtag frustrating, but that's life. So, uh, yeah, whack August 14 in your diary if you want to come and uh, celebrate amongst other motivated business owners the fact that this show is turning 200 and uh, it'd be great to meet you because um, it's kind of weird, this virtual world. It's hawking down the barrel of a microphone or whatever you call that. It's not a barrel, is it? It's a barrel of a camera, but you know what I mean. So I love meeting listeners and um, just seeing how you're all going out there promoting, building, growing your businesses. So, uh, yeah, August 14 in Melbourne. Stay tuned for more details. It'll be late in the afternoon as well. So uh, you can wrap up all things work if that's kind of the hours that you work. Hope to see you then. Okay, today's guest, David Rain. Now, this is a very, very interesting interview. Uh, For overseas listeners or listeners who may be too young to remember David, although that's not wouldn't be the case because he's still on telly. He happens to now be a real estate agent. David uh, was a TV presenter. He was on Getaway for 14 years. He hosted The Morning Show. He uh, was an actor in a number of Australian miniseries, including The Flying Doctors. And he also, was also the original drummer of one of my favourite bands of all time, Australian Crawl, uh, back way back in 1978. Can you believe he only did that for about 10 months before he embarked on an acting and a TV career? What I find really interesting and why I got David on the show is because he has made the transition into real estate. Now, David has spent a long time in front of the camera, and now he's decided to go and get into small business. He doesn't own the real estate agent for which he works, but he's very much a small business owner these days. Well, not a small business owner, but a small business person. And this is a story of transition, a story of entrepreneurism, a story of embracing opportunities when they come along. And he explains to us how he got into real estate. And there is marketing gold strewn throughout. So I started off by asking David, what's been the highlight of a very, very colourful career? I guess, the hi- to be honest, the highlight, or uh, the, the surprise of it is that uh, I've managed to... Um, Still be here in, in 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 that business in some form or or, or other. Um, it's always it's been it felt very diverse to me, which is strange because I always thought I was pursuing the one thing. But then when I look back at the kind of wider body of work that I've done over the last thirty thirty five mm. years or whatever, it is actually quite diverse, and I've been thrilled that I've been able to keep it going, really. Mate, it's incredibly diverse. I mean, you look at people who choose to be in the public eye and they're going to go either down the path of being in a band, being on radio, hosting a TV show or being an actor. And you've um, you've somehow decided to do all of those. Right. Well, it was kind of necessity, really. You know, uh, I remember when I was, I was working as an actor fairly regularly and then uh, – but at the same time, I was always playing in bands – And then one of those bands, the Shantuzis, took off. So I followed that. And then when I had Jack of that after a while, because we just worked so hard and toured so often. And I remembered part of my routine uh, before going on on stage would be uh, I'd get nervous. I get nervous about everything. Mm -hmm. So I had the butterflies and the stomach. And before going on stage, part of my routine was to just whip into the toilet backstage and throw up. Great. And it got to the point where I would be on a tour for three months. I'd throw up every night. I was as skinny as a stick and ended up in hospital where they plugged me into a drip and said, mate, you've got to stop this. Oh, wow. Um, well, you all, I've just thrown up before this interview. So, uh, you know, just to keep it in line, um, yeah. there, was some big hair, there was some big hair to manage too in those days with the Shantuzis. There was some big hair. I didn't have a lot of it, but the others did. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, the point I was going to make was that uh, I, I eventually thought, yeah, I do have to stop, you know, th- th- pursuing this career, which makes me throw up. So I became an actor and that became, um, you know, I did a series of uh, The Flying Doctors and that stopped and they asked me to go in the getaway, so I became a TV presenter. So I was just following whatever 
presented itself to me, really. It's interesting. Uh, the, we're talking before I hit record about the fact that, you know, like you, you're not the typical guest of the Small Business Big Marketing Show, but at the same time, you, you've been a small business owner all your life. You've been, you've been a freelancer all your life. It's, and out of necessity, you've chosen, you know, which way, you know, David Rain Incorporated is going to go at any given time. That's right. I was having a chat to a mate of mine who got another project going at the moment, and he is a he's a businessman. He's run several successful advertising agencies, independent advertising agencies. Gears them up, gets them going, gangbusters, mm. and then along comes the big agency and wants to swallow him up. So he sells them nice for a big amount of money. And he eventually got to the point where he said, as an advertising guy, he said, "I'm sick and tired. I do not like doing the pitch. I don't like going to the agencies or the or, or the um, the companies and doing the pitch for yep. the work." Yep. So he decided that he wanted to. Um, find a way to get the companies to come to him, which he's done very successfully, and he's transitioned into another area altogether. But he is a t- typical entrepreneur. He has that entrepreneurial spirit. And I was saying to him, you know, I've run my business, which is me, a freelancer for 30 years, and I'm sure I would have been a whole lot more successful had I had just a thread of entrepreneurial spirit, of which I have none. <laughs> oh, I'm going to challenge you on that. Now, you hold that Let's thought. Do. Well, I will. Hold that thought. I have a, a, an ability to digress. Your, your mate who owns the advertising agency, can you share how he gets clients to come to him? It's very interesting. He's become a global branding expert. So what he's done now is he's been able to transition from – he used the knowledge that he had in pitching and running a very successful advertising agency to becoming an expert on – how you should position yourself, how you should position your brand and your organisation. And his belief, his mantra is uh, the three Bs. He calls it belonging, belief and Mm behaviour. And so he goes to corporate. Well, corporations come to him now because he has the reputation. And they say, how do we align our brand? How do we how do we get the whole company, the whole business to come along with us, believe in us and be be a part of our belonging and behavioural uh, approach? Yeah, right. And um, he sets that all up and, and, and it just leads to further business. So they bring along their clients. He does his spiel. He's got an audio-visual presentation that goes with it. Yeah. He shows them the great adver- advertisements, the great commercial uh, approaches from the, the big and uh, happening and inspiring companies around the world. And by the end of his first talk, the the, the whole organisation and, and the employees of the organisation, the management team are all just vibe. They're all feeling yeah, so right. passionate about taking this forward. And then um, he gets them together in a second, uh, second time round and they all start getting together, going off in groups, being inspired. So it's all emotion. What- it's all emotion. That's right. It's all, and, and, and they all walk out of there so pumped about their business that he's got them for life. Then yeah. they come back to him and ask him how they, you know, what's the next approach? And well, stuff. I look forward to interviewing whoever he is on the show going in, in, in some time in the future. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, look, uh, when, we, when we finish up, I, I won't tell you his name now. He may not want to be involved. Yeah, okay. I'll tell you afterwards because he'd be a great person. Great. Great. Now, listen, uh, let's get back to you because yep. not an entrepreneur. I mean, give me a break. You know, I think many of us undervalue what, whatever an entrepreneur is. I'm not into labels, but someone who's running their own show, who sees a business opportunity and evaluates it, whether from the gut or from the head, I don't care. Uh, I'm more gut. I reckon you are too. Yeah. But gosh, mate, I mean, really, you don't see yourself as being an entrepreneur? Well... I've always muddled through, you know. I've always mm. felt as though I've muddled through. I, Me too. I, I, Me too. But I see myself on. I see myself much more entrepreneurial than I do whatever the opposite of entrepreneurial is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't feel to me like, you know, I have great ideas. Well. Yeah. Pardon me for being so modest. Um, I feel like I <laughs> I'll be the great, judge of that. I feel like I have some good ideas, but I my difficulty is is getting them from the idea stage to, particularly in the television world, getting them from the idea stage to on the screen. You know, and often I need somebody else that is has got that genius in being able to make the idea happen. Have you often been able to find those people? 
No, that's mm. not always easy either. And yeah, you, yeah. The whole, the, the whole layering system of the television business is interesting too. You've got to get past certain levels. You've got to get through middle management. You've got to get through to the executive stage. And I, I have another mate who is a very successful television executive. He was, uh, he was the guy that set up Getaway in Australia. He now works uh, in uh, LA. He was running the National Geographic channel for a while. And, he, you know, it's very, he's a very renowned TV, international TV executive. He had this theory. He said, you know, when you want to pitch an idea to television, and I'm sure this is the same in business, when you want to pitch an idea to the television executives, they're like penguins at the penguin parade. One will pop up out of the water look around, see that it's okay, jump up on the beach, and all the rest will follow, and they'll go straight up the, straight up the sand. But Very conservative. But if stops and hesitates and mm. turns around and goes back, you've lost the lot, you know. So you've got to line them all up, get them all, all behind you, get, him, get them all believing in your idea. And, you know, that takes a lot. Can I make an observation of you? <laughs> because, Please. again, now back, coming back to this not an entrepreneur, you know, I see this in... Even like trade, creative people generally, trades people, uh, actors, anyone who's who's creative, uh, and I just think my, we're all creative beings to some extent. Um, you can be good at creativity, or you can be good at business, and then there's people who have managed to combine both. And, yes. and I do think that's you. I, you know, I look at the, you know, every now and then you come across a builder, and we're going to talk about your real estate career shortly. So you kind of would be in the in kind of line with this. But every now and then you come across a builder who can build a beautiful home, but he also manages his, his appointments yes. and his customer service really yeah. well. He's marketing really well, and he's he's kind of got the left brain right brain thing happening. And I don't know. Maybe you're undervaluing the fact that you're highly creative, um, and uh, you know I've had Jules Lund on this show before, great and you've worked great fellow, and you've yeah. worked with him on Getaway. And I remember Jules saying to me once, you helped him uh, when he was a young bloke as a Getaway reporter, not just on you know the story creation, but on the production of that story. And I, I just think that's to be able to have that emotional and rational side of uh, both happening at the same time. That's why you've been successful. I don't know. That's an observation. Right. Well, maybe you're right. It just, it, you know, it, for me, it just felt like, you know, it, it always feels like, uh, maybe it's that business. It always feels like, oh God, you've got to take the next step. There's yes. always another. There's always the next step to take. <laughs> um, and I don't know. I don't know if anyone feels like this, but I felt. I, I never feel like you actually get there. You know. <laughs> does that does that cause you um, a level of frustration? Well, clearly, there's a bit of frustration in your voice about it, but anxiety or annoyance yes. or yeah. Sure, sure, yeah, there's always anxiety. You know, you're always thinking, oh, God, well, if this one stops, what happens after that? <laughs> so you can never, I've never been able to rest on my laurels because I'm always thinking, oh, hell, what are they going to think and will it get me to the next one, you know? Well, imagine you hear it, that's you talking, and I can I feel the same too. It's like, what if this show stops? I don't I don't intend it to, but, you know, you don't know what's around the corner. And, yeah, yeah. you know, here's you talking about being, you know, hosting high-level TV programs, et cetera, and you're kind of thinking, God, what if that stops? Imagine how the the small business owner who's just starting out feels. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, you know, I, I think that anyone that runs their own small business or large business is a very incredibly brave and bold individual. Mm. Mm. You know, and where, and you know, should we go down this track? Where is the incentive now? You know, it's such hard work. You're taking on such a responsibility. You're hiring people. You are responsible for their mm. uh, financial well-being so often, and there seems just so often so little incentive. So I hope that small business people, large business people as well, are able to find themselves a niche market whereby they're making they're making ends meet. You know, they're turning a profit, but they're enjoying it. Mm. It, it just comes down to that thing to me, whereby there's an there's got to be a large whack of enjoyment to make it all worthwhile. Oh, mate, I couldn't agree more. You've got to. Um, I interviewed uh, Jerry Ryan. Uh, oh who, yeah. yeah, I know his son. Yeah, I oh, do. Son. Yeah. So Jayco Caravans, I mean, what an amazing guy. Jayco Caravans brings oh, I walking would, with- You know, just on that, yeah. I, I, I write travel articles and I, I went off to do a travel, travel article uh, about caravanning and uh, through Jayco. So Jayco got me into the factory and I just thought, Jayco Caravans, I don't know much about caravans. Mm. I thought I was going out to sort of Dandenong South yeah. and I'd find a couple of blokes in a paddock and yeah. a shed welding nah. together. 
a, a, a room on top of a trailer. My God, <laughs> they're, they're pumping out a caravan every 12 minutes over yeah, there. It's extraordinary, it's isn't unbelievable it? Unbelievable. Yeah. And passionate too. Don't you love it when you find someone? You, know, you, you, you and I go caravans. Yeah. Well, I haven't. I've never owned one. I think I've been in one maybe once. Yeah. But you know, like, and then you you find someone who's passionate about you know that, and they you know like they can take you down a rabbit hole where you go. You're the, you, by the end of it, you're as passionate as they are. Exactly. <laughs> and they've done all these things. You know, they, they, if you look at every caravan on the road, they're kind of panelled. You know, the, the, the side of the caravan, the, the aluminium is panelled, not Jayco. They discovered a way. They were so passionate about their business. They went, we want a clean side. So there's they, they don't have the panelled side. And Jeez, they, David, you, you, know, you know your caravans, mate. Oh, man, I could go on forever. <laughs> I love it. That's small business. That's big business. Yeah. Well, Jerry. Jerry was talked uh, last week so about this notion of be passionate about whatever you choose to do in your small business. Be absolutely passionate about. It. Don't. He said, don't fall in love with it because love will lead to blindness. In love, yes. you you will not see things as they truly are. But be yeah. absolutely passionate because if you're not passionate, you may as well just go and you know work for the man. You exactly. know, and, and head home each night and hug your kids. But there exactly. is um, there's an excitement to small business. Let's talk about now. You're still involved, David, in in TV and and I'm getting projects up. And please explain what what you're doing there. But you have also made uh, what I what I personally think is a really interesting transition into real estate. Um, what have you done, and why have you done it? Well, it's interesting. that that probably came out of a passion as well. I I um. I've always loved properties. Uh, we've, we uh, live on a property down here on the Mornington Peninsula on the uh, Western Port Bay side. Uh, so it's quite rural down here. And um, I, I just love this area. I grew up in this area. I surfed this coast for, for, I've surfed this coast forever. So I know every nook and cranny of the area. And I often find myself drifting off, you know, trundling down dirt tracks, looking at properties and just dreaming and so on. And I've, I've, I've always been, very interested in real estate. I've always kept an eye on prices and so on. And I was, um, I, the, the last job that I did on the television was hosting that morning show and it just got to a point where I couldn't get it to the stage that I wanted it to be at. You know, I was trying so hard to make it a morning show that was worthwhile watching, which is God, almost, what, what, what were you thinking? It's almost an oxymoron with morning shows. But anyway, I invested so much energy and time that it actually wore me out. And I got to the point where I actually said, I have to quit. This is making me, almost making me unwell. And so I spent some time just sort of dreaming and, and, and cruising around the peninsula and, 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 you know, delighting in the properties down here. And I thought, well, how can I turn that into something that is more reliable than the television business? Well, I thought more reliable <laughs> at that point. And um, so I spoke to, and I was aware of the local agents, and there was one on the other side of the peninsula that had a great sort of marketing profile, I thought. And so I knew some people that knew Michelle, the woman that runs Previous this, guest of this show. Right, you know you know Michelle. Michelle. Um, and she runs the, uh, the agency, and so... I approached her through some people I know that knew her with an idea to do uh, video presentations for these large multi-million dollar properties for when they sell them. I had no further mm. interest in that. Right. So just to be clear, so your idea was you had a marketing idea to yeah. help real estate agents flog the properties and you would yeah. front these videos and play to your skill as a presenter. Exactly. Basically present the property as a getaway story which is pretty much what yeah. I did, you know, for, for so many years on that program. Mm -hmm. And so I, she invited me to lunch and we sat down and by the end of the lunch, she's very persuasive. Oh, yeah. By the end of the lunch, she said, you, come and join me as, a, as an agent. And I went, oh, but, you know. Did you, did you so say, do you know who I am, Michelle? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I just thought, well, it's an opportunity again. You know, it's just gut feeling. It yeah, was just yeah. following following a lead. I thought, well, as an opportunity has presented itself here, I'll go and do it. So that's what I've been uh, doing uh, the other you know seventy percent of the time, whilst I pursue other projects on television. You've, and how long have you been doing the real estate, David? Uh, just on a year now. So it's a company called Aqua Acreage. Uh, uh, Michelle Scoglin, who, you, who you're talking about, owns a, a real estate agency called Aqua Real Estate in Mount Eliza. And That's right. I, I had Michelle on the show about 
four years ago. She did an amazing job of turning, uh, creating a real estate brand from scratch and turning it into what I would consider to be more akin to a fashion a fashion label yes. than than a real estate brand. And it was a complete disruptor in the industry, the local industry, and uh, fantastic. I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes to to that interview because it, it was just a wonderful example of creating a strong point of difference. That's um, right. It's very bold. She's very bold. She's very determined. Uh, she's very business minded. You know? Yeah, yeah. And so then you've gone. She's gone together. You've created this thing called Aqua Acreage, which is about selling bigger properties, rural properties, not suburban properties like Michelle sells. That's right. So, so our, my focus is uh, the other side of the peninsula, the rural properties on the other side of the peninsula. And so I've been selling um, uh, acreages and vineyards and all sorts of things, you know, and uh, and and chipping in on the other side, you know, chipping in on some of the the. Um, the the, the, more residential yeah but the, the sort of multi-million dollar residential properties over that side as well david talk to me about was it really like at the end of the lunch you go yeah 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 i'll, I'll yeah i'll do i'll be a real estate agent that's what i'll do i mean was there any uh, what about ego and pride maybe i could be over engineering this and you 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 the businessman you don't reckon you are but you know like you the businessman have gone well i've got to make a quid uh, I've got you know I've got a family to support and you know you don't know where the next dollar's coming from in TV. Was it really that simple, or was there no was there no battle of the ego or? Oh well, there's always that. You, there's always when you've been on the television for such a long time, you always wonder how you're being perceived. Um, so yeah, you you have a public profile, so you wonder how that's being perceived. But uh, you know you got to get over that. Mm, really? Well, I, I reckon many wouldn't. I reckon there'd be a whole lot and. Mate, correct me if I'm wrong, but would there not be a, a graveyard of living TV personalities who couldn't make a transition and therefore are cutting off their nose to spite their face? Absolutely. You're dead right. I mean, you, you, do, you do have to get over that. Um, but I was always, you know, I, I, I continue to be involved in the television business, so, you know, I get my kicks. If, if, if there are any of those kicks that I require, I still get them from, from doing the bits and pieces that I do. But What's the uh, kick? What is the I, kick? Sorry? What is the kick? Well, you know, the, if, if there's – I don't think I have a particularly massive ego, but mm. a lot of people in television business absolutely thrive on ego and they must be on – they must be on the telly, or if they're not mm. on the telly, they couldn't possibly think of it doing anything else. You mm. know? Um, and that doesn't particularly bother me. But uh, there, it was interesting because I think that Michelle recognised the fact that, oh, perhaps if I get somebody that's got a public profile in mm-hmm. here, it's it's really going to fire the business up. But I, I'm not sure that that's how it's worked. Mm-hmm. I think people probably look at me and think, what does he know about real estate? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so what's so it like I'm, when you when you do walk into a property? Uh and people go, but aren't you meant to be on the? Aren't you meant to be on the Today Show? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a bit of that, you know. Um, there's a lot of quizzical kind of staring, but um, uh, <laughs> it's been interesting. It's been interesting, and it, it it hasn't been particularly easy. And we're still, you know, we've still got a long mm. way to go. But we're just, you know, we're clawing at the coal face and uh, seeing if we can dig down to a diamond. Well, well there you go. Lovely, uh, lovely analogy. And what what what's been the difficult part of the transition for you is there anything in particular i mean real estate i too love real estate i mean us melburnians have a weird thing it's like you know we love our real estate don't we um uh, the idea of being a real estate agent um part of it actually is off always excited me but the hours have always freaked me out so um what's been difficult for you well for whatever reason real estate agents don't have a particularly good reputation (laughs) (laughs) nor do morning show presenters (laughs) <laughs> so you know it's, it's it's there's been a bit of that you know people look at you askance they I don't, people often don't trust you you know yeah, yeah. and i've come in and i've really wanted to be you know i've always i've always prided myself on being an honest and hopefully charming individual mm. and i've tried to bring that to the industry but really you need to be a cutthroat bastard to succeed mm. <laughs> because you have to you know you're managing clients expectations so generally the client wants more money than the house is worth and generally the buyer, the potential buyer, wants to pay way less than the client is asking. Mm -hmm. So it's – and I'm trying to be Mr. Nice Guy, Mr. (laughs) Honest Guy, Mr. Charming Guy in the middle. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a a three-way difficult tussle. Right. Well, that would be bringing a whole – 
new set of skills that maybe you're kind of in the process of developing and and watching others do you learn from anyone in particular oh uh, yeah well you know I, i've i've um often been on on sites you know when when there's been a uh, a sale going on uh, i've been there with uh, michelle who is my colleague who runs the you know who we just discussed mm. who runs the agency and she's you know she's to see her in action is uh, she's a real thriller you know she goes for it <laughs> yeah you know, she makes it happen well, she does it, and hopefully she may well listen to this. If you are listening, Michelle, hello. And uh, I was saying before we hit record, she sold my home in uh, it was ten to twelve hours uh, from the moment we put we put it on the market with us. So uh, yeah, you love that. Yeah, yeah. No, she's doing something right, and yeah. uh, you know it's an industry that uh, it's pure marketing real estate. I guess I haven't really. I've been wanting to get who's John McGrath is someone who I'd love to get on this show. Yep. Um, he's kind of like Sydney, maybe Australia's leading real estate because. I think as as small business owners and marketers, which we all are, listening to this show, there's a lot we can learn from from gun real estate agents because it is pure marketing, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. And it, and it's pushing the deal. It's it's making the deal happen. It's 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 very real. It's very here and now, you know. And it's um, it's just making the deal happen. Mm. Is there any particular marketing that you found working for Aqua Acreage and that you might have introduced to the business, David? Um, I. A good turn of phrase is good, you know. Uh, being able to present it, uh, you know, everyone that everyone now that's looking for properties to buy is looking on uh, the internet. Yep. And it's being able to encapsulate the property quickly and precisely mm. in a, in a couple of lines, uh, well written lines, well chosen lines. Do you do that? I do that. I do a bit of that. Yeah. And also, it's it's just. When you meet somebody at a property, it's recognizing tr- tr- the skill is rec- in recognizing what they really want as soon as possible, and then being able to present that aspect of that property to that person, mm. uh, you know, concisely early on, and then the rest of it hopefully is just cream. Yeah, yeah, great tip there, great tip. Like getting an understanding. Often we, when I talk about, I've got, a, I have an online forum, and we talk about pitching in there. And one of the questions I always say to people who who have the opportunity to pitch their business to someone else is, before you do that, you, you ask, hey, do you mind if I ask what you do? Um, before I tell you what I do. Yeah. Uh, and likewise for you, I guess seeing a client is to like someone coming in to inspect a home that you're selling is what are you looking for? You know, like what, what what's the kind of what's the deal maker for you? Exactly. Uh, and, and, and yeah, exactly. And if you can get to the crux of that and then yeah, make them recognize that that's you've got exactly what they need. Yep. Then um you're halfway you're halfway there it's like i i saw recently that movie the wolf of wall street oh yep and leonardo dicaprio plays brilliantly plays the you know the the hyper 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 uber stockbroker guy <laughs> You know, Jordan like, Belfort, who I'm trying to get on this show, oh, much right. to some listeners. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll upset a few people, but yeah. Anyway, go on. Well, he he, he made a business out of it. He, he did. The, the scruples were questionable, Correct. obviously, and and the manner was uh, less than legal always. But <laughs> there was an interesting. Um, he, it's an example in great marketing, talking people into stuff. You know, uh, he was a genius at that. And there's mm. uh, an example in that movie whereby he has a, he has a ballpoint pen. He pulls a ballpoint pen out of his pocket, pocket, and he weighs it in front of some of the people that want to join his business. And they say, "Okay, sell me this pen." And these people don't know what to do. They don't know how to sell him the pen. Mm. Mm. And there's one guy who's not who's who's really one of his henchmen. Uh, takes the pen from him and says, okay, write your name on that piece of paper there. And he searches for a pen in his pocket. He doesn't have a pen in his pocket. He said, well, I need a pen. So the guy hands back the pen. <laughs> so it's recognising <laughs> exactly it. what they need and so having simple. that yeah. to give them. You know, <clears throat> Beautifully simple. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, David, I just want to wrap things up and be a little bit self-indulgent, if I may. Sure. You're a good interviewer. You've made a you've made a career out of uh, interviewing people in some aspect, way, some way, shape, or form, whether it be on Getaway or uh, uh, other TV uh, things that you've done. Well, the morning uh, show that I did was that well, was all pu- interview, yeah, pu- pure interview. Now, um, I've spent the last five years with this show interviewing people. I- I'm going to ask you to. I- I'm not looking for pats on the back. Absolutely not. To constructively critique anything that I could have done better. And 
Talk to me about what makes a great interview because there is a lot of listeners who are off there now creating content, podcasts, right. videos, yeah. and interviewing people. It's a great way of creating marketing. So there you go. I've set myself up. Well, the, 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 the best thing that an interviewer can do is listen. So you can, you can do all the research in the world, and uh, research is really, really important. And you, your research should not – you should go to page three – of the bio and don't rest on page one, which is what a whole lot of researchers do. They give you the same questions that, you know, the same information that everyone is going to base their questions on. Mm -hmm. um, and it was interesting. I heard you talking to, uh, to Jules and he was talking about um, interview technique and really you want to find something different. And I, I was fortunate in that uh, having been an actor and having been on television so much that, and, and having been a musician releasing records and things like that, I was constantly interviewed when we had a new record coming out or a new TV series coming up. I was always being interviewed and everyone would ask you the same question and you'd sit in uh, a room day after day mm. answering questions from all these uh, journalists that would come through and you were dying for the person that bothered to do a little extra work and find out something interesting about you and you'd think, thank God for you, I am going to give you all <laughs> the time in the world because because you've bothered to think of something different. Interesting. So you want to – so a couple of things. A great introduction, if you can introduce somebody really, really well, you put them at ease. If you can find something uh, funny or incredible or really interesting about them, they'll perk up and they'll be at ease from the start. And then it's about listening to their answers because you'll get so much more. If you listen closely to their answer and not worry about the next question you, you've prepared – you'll follow the train of conversation and often you'll pick up stuff that is so much more interesting anyway. And you've done, you do that really well. I mean, you, our chat is not like an interview, it's like a conversation and that's so much more interesting to listen to. Brilliant. Oh, I'm glad you said that because that is absolutely my intent. And uh, um, listen, I, I can off, sometimes I find myself going, "Oh, hang on, we've gone going down another path," and I and I actually actively say to myself, "Let it go down that path. Just remember where you have got to get back to." And, That's right. You know, That's I've, right. I've, I've got a pen and paper next to me, and I make a little note. You know, go back to there. But uh, you know, as the listener, it, yes, I mean it's it's incredibly interesting when you can explore unexpected things. That's right, and often it, when you when you wander down that path with them, it opens up further insights that are relevant to the conversation anyway. Yeah. You know that no idea of putting people at ease up front and asking that question? I I know I note that the panel used to do that, the guys at Working Dog. In fact, yep. I, I kind of learnt that idea where you, they would actually bring on a guest to maybe promote. Let's say they brought on, uh, I don't know, whoever, so a, a, an actor to promote the film that they're in town to promote. The first question would be completely unrelated to that film. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a really good trick. And if you can get them laughing too in, the, in a well-constructed int introduction, if you can get them laughing. I used to find this on the on the morning show at 9 a.m. that we did at uh, Channel 10. We'd have a lot of the politicians on. And, they, you know, the politicians oh, are yeah. asking. And they, they all they want to do is evade the question. <laughs> so you've really got to get them in the palm of your hand somehow. You've got to get them really comfortable and trusting in you. And so the best way to do that was to give them, you know, give them a dig or hassle them, hassle them in a humorous kind of way up front so that they're, they're ready. They're, they're kind of, you know, they're on the edge of their seat. They're ready to do that. They're going, all right, yeah. mate, yeah, well, I'll rise to this occasion. And if you get them chuckling and in that sense, to that frame of mind, you can get so much more out of them. Is there, is there two or three questions? I, I must admit, and my listeners will probably have a laugh as I say this, but I, I, I can default to um, what's your superpower? I find that like, gosh, if I'm, if I'm struggling for an intro and I'm about to do the interview, that's my default question. Right. Um, right. And what's that's that? A good question. That's a good question. Too. Well, it is, I, I, I think it is actually a good question because it always results in good conversation and um, um, it's, it's self-indulgent on the, on the interviewee's behalf. Are yeah. there another couple of questions that you used to use that kind of seem to work and really draw out a great start to an interview? Well, it's interesting because I never had a formula as such. Um, so yeah, I never, I probably mm. should have, you know, I, I never, <laughs> I never had a fallback, I never had a fallback position. I, I remember you, you asked this question of Jules too, you know, the, the, the really, the really hard interview, you know, the, the guy that- Well, that was, I, I've got that question from you, yeah, go on. 
you know, their, their monosyllabic uh, responses, if if that, you know, yep. and I had a couple of those, and that was just where my research would, would help me out because I, I, I would do so much research on everybody that I, I knew that even if I was getting monosyllabic uh, results, I could keep going, I could keep going. But you get to that point too where you go, this guy's not giving me anything. Why is he bothered turning mm. up? I'm just going to finish it now anyway, you know. Yep, yep. But yes, you know, I never really had... I never really had a formula. I probably did, but didn't really. Probably it. subconsciously. Did you, what's the toughest interview you, you ever had to do, David? Uh, there was one actor. I won't mention his name. Go on. An Australian actor who was just whose um, name? What was his initials? B. <laughs> uh, w M. And uh, and he was just. It was interesting because. I was working. I was one of the the cast members uh, uh, of the Flying Doctors, uh, which is a series, TV series, way back. And um, uh, you know, I was one of the main cast members there. And this guy came on. It was one of the first things he he did. He just came out of acting school, and he was all you know, mm. acting school like. And um, we were all very, you know, the the main cast there were really lovely people. You know, we, there were no airs nor graces. And uh, anyone who came along, we we just encouraged them and embraced them and, uh, you know, enjoyed their company. But not this guy. He was always difficult. And uh, he was there for a six-week stint, and we were glad to see the back of him. <laughs> he's, he's gone on to become a very well-known actor in, in, in this country. He's, 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 he's not a bad actor either. Is he, is but, it, I'm, I'm hopeless with actors. Is, was he on Sea Change? Uh, I don't know. Oh, trying to figure um, out who it is. Um, and uh, <laughs> anyway, he came on. He was promoting something else, and he just he turned Gave up nothing. late. Oh, yeah. He uh, wasn't interested in um, having any makeup, but you've got to have makeup. And the, mm. you know, the makeup girl said later, "Oh, he was the worst person we've mm. ever had." Mate, I'll and wear makeup just, on this show. Uh, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you in the street. You need it. Um, <laughs> and you know, he was just—he he just didn't want to be there. Mm. And you, eventually, you think, well, why did you turn up? You know, yeah. and you, eventually you. When someone's that difficult, you just got to nip it in the bud and send them on their way. Yeah, you do. You got to be careful. I mean, I spoke on a, a recent show here with uh, Andrew Griffiths, a guy who comes on this show every now and then. We talk about you got to be careful what you put out to others. You know, be conscious, be self conscious, be self aware. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, brilliant, mate. My last question: What question should I have asked you if I'd gone to page three of your bio? <laughs> um, oh God! <laughs> uh, uh, what's next? <laughs> there you go. Give yourself a plug. What are you working on? Oh, we've got a couple of things on the go. I mean, there's the the real estate thing, obviously, uh, but um, I I do a lot of writing. I mean, that's that's my real passion these days. Um, I, I mentioned before, I, I do a lot of travel writing for the for the newspaper and a couple of magazines. Mm -hmm. So I like to travel and write about that. But I, I've also uh, I've I've written a script which is getting um, some real interest at the moment. And um, Phil. There's another project which is a which is a kind of tonight interview music slash program, you know. So, uh, um, well, if you can weave some kind of um, marketing segment in there for small business owners, I re I'll be able to find the time. Uh, mate, Absolutely, mate. and you you come with your own makeup. <laughs> <laughs> two hours before and two hours afterwards. Goodness me. You never take it off, that's right. Correct, correct. Hey, David, mate, you've been gold. A, a wonderful, wonderful chat, um, which, uh, you know, as we said at the start, you know, you're not a typical guest, but I think you've shared some gold. So thanks for being a part of the Small Business Big Marketing Show. Tim, it's been a delight. Thank you. What a good fellow David Rain is, and you got to love a bit of Shantuzzi's. Takes me right back to the 1980s. For those of you who can remember uh, the Shantuzzi's, they are a fun little band out of Melbourne. Now, before we uh, before I share my top three learnings with you from that interview, I want to let you in on a little secret that smart business owners everywhere, and I mean everywhere, are onto. Have you got marketing materials lying around that need a little tweaking? Maybe the details on your stationery need a little updating? Or you'd like to pimp your logo for a special occasion? Or update your social media headers? No worries at all. That'll be $19 and it'll be done in an hour, thanks to Swiftly.com. Small design fixes fast. That's how they roll. You simply upload your artwork that needs fixing, tell them what needs doing, and boom, one hour and 19 bucks later... 
it's done. Check them out at swiftly.com. That's S-W-I-F-T-L-Y. Okay, so uh, top three learnings from having that chat, that fireside chat with David Rain. Number one, if you're a small business owner, embrace your entrepreneurial side. It's there. Now, that seems kind of obvious, and it was interesting talking to David up the front of that chat where he kind of didn't really acknowledge his entrepreneurial side, but he is, and we all are. Most of you listening to this show, if you're not stuck in the cubicle, are entrepreneurs now. Even those who are stuck in the cubicle, there's that would-be entrepreneur dying to get out. So embrace it, acknowledge it, let it excite you, feel that excitement that it comes with running your own show. Boy, oh boy, I love it. Number two, listen to what your prospects are saying, verbally, body language, the whole energy they're giving out and create marketing that addresses that, that those feelings, those energies. I know, hashtag woo-woo, but hey, get over it. Number three, uh, I'll interview tips. Start by putting your guests at ease. So if you are thinking of doing interviews, maybe you're thinking of doing a podcast, maybe you think of doing a series of interviews via your blog, um, maybe you're thinking of do I don't know, somewhere, maybe live from stage somewhere, like I did a couple of episodes back for Westpac. Um, start by putting your guests at ease and then you can have a more relaxed conversation. And I think the best marketing is relaxed. I think the best marketing is conversational. Maybe not for every brand, but I don't know. It works for me and it just makes for uh, better messages, more engaging messages and, and things to be shared. Thanks a lot, David Rain, for appearing on the big, so the big, the big marketing show. Yeah, that's what we'll call it. This is the big marketing show. Before we uh, put a close to episode 192, um, would love you to put August 14 in your diary uh, for a Melbourne uh, live event of episode 200. More to come next week on that. Leave a comment in the show notes if you enjoyed this episode. Um, head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and tell us what you thought. Head into the forum. Love to see you in there. Remember, Net Registry are there to get your online marketing sorted and swiftly are there to get small design fixes done fast. Upcoming guests, Warwick Kappa, another 80 celebrity, really. <laughs> Isn't that what's going on there? Got a hearing aid business um, that sells totally online and is everywhere at the moment uh, in advertising terms. They are ev- advertising and sponsorship. Fantastic. Can't wait to hear how they're doing that. Uh, fruit delivery service. I have got an interview with the uh, a fellow who started a fruit delivery service, and he is, he is a cubicle escapee. So really, some really good stuff coming up in future weeks. I'm Timbo Reed. You've been smart enough to tune in to the world's number one marketing show. May your marketing be the best marketing. Hooroo. You've been listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show with Tim Reed. Want more marketing goodness? Then visit smallbusinessbigmarketing.com.